to enter a place where the worlds of the living and deceased cross over? That strange notion is terrifying to some, comforting to others, and for years, of course, growing in popularity. So what's going on? How do some people convince so many others that they can contact loved ones who've died? We thought we'd conduct a primetime experiment. So now Chris Cuomo with Voices from Beyond. What's better at Halloween than a good ghost story? Then again, why talk about ghosts when you can talk to them? From an early age, John Edward displayed TV mediums like John Edward and James Bond Prague have become household names because of their perceived gifts. The problem is, it's tough to know what actually goes on when a psychic claims to be channeling messages from the dead. I know you're trying to contact your son who passed over. So we hired Ian Rowland, who's been studying how to do this for years, and says it's all in the technique. So we decided to put his powers to the test with our own prime time experiment. Do you believe that you can replicate what we see on TV when it's a so-called medium? We should be showing things like, I'm able to come up with information which people connect with, which seems to describe uh, people who have died and moved on to the afterlife. We invited 20 volunteers who indicated they were open to the possibility of communication with the dead for a reading. Roland was given no personal information about the audience, and he had no contact with them beforehand. I have a gentleman with me who's quite senior. Just a few moments in, our skeptical eyes grow wide when this happens. Um, whether you knew him directly or somebody you know knows this gentleman, I'm being shown Michael. I think that I can relate to that. This gentleman, was it, uh, a, I'm being, oh, I can feel it, a chest, a, a chest or a heart area problem when he passed over. This is correct yes. for you. Thank yes. you very much. And is, is the name Michael, is this, I mean, given the significance here, or is this his name? That's my name. That's your name. It seems Roland is making a genuine connection. Um, he then says he feels someone else trying to come through. I've been told that I should talk to you about Ka Karen. Um, and she's mentioning these names and she's saying that... I have a cousin. She had a granddaughter, Karen. Is there a relocation or moving? Who's uh, moving home or where they live? Is this you or somebody you know? My sister's moving right now. Sounds pretty general. Until this. If I come into your home, do it, would I see a, a calendar or a wall chart that's nothing to do with the current year? It's actually out of date. <laughs> she gave me... A fabric calendar I still have. And she made that for you, okay? She gave it to me. All right, I, I won't go any further with that, but she's, uh, you still have that, don't you? I have it in my hope chest. I hope that I for can... many, it seemed real, but Roland was about to tell them something unexpected, something about his ability to connect with the dead. What I was doing tonight, I feel, um, if, if some of you interpreted as a communication and a real message and a real communication on link that was achieved i think that's real for you and i'm not going to say otherwise i'm not sure it was real for me it was a startling admission the secret of where his connection comes from when we come back seeing is believing but what did you just see it's coming from here it's not coming from here <laughs> Psychic Secrets, when primetime returns. They have turned you into a believer, but there is more going on here than meets the eye. Once again, Chris Cuomo. In our primetime experiment, Ian Rowland seemed to contact this man's father and give this woman some tips from her grandmother. But nothing he revealed was more surprising than this. It's coming from here. It's not coming from here. <laughs> Uh, certainly, as far as I'm concerned, it's not coming from anybody who has passed on to the great afterlife, that's for sure. So, how did he do it? What I'm trying to do is to use the techniques that I know of as cold reading to try and replicate the kind of thing that people have seen done when there's apparently this hotline to heaven. Cold reading. Techniques that Roland says allow him to simulate psychic power. I know the kind of medical symptoms that are most likely to get people to agree. I have lists in my head of the 18 commonest male names and 18 commonest female names that have been registered in the United States over the past 45 years. I start with something as vague as possible, and I'm looking for who is going to bite. It's a lot like fishing. You know, you often you can feel it before you see it. Let's watch again and see how Roland pulled off our cold reading. I've been shown Michael. 
Uh, you started with Michael, a common name, and you just threw it out there. So happened that the man's name was Michael. Absolutely. But it could have been a loved one who was Michael. This is what we call the Russian doll statement. I mean, it has so many layers of meaning. If it's not you, if it's not your immediate family, if it's not your extended family, it's somebody you work with, it's a friend, it's somebody you used to know, it's somebody you're going to know. There's so many layers of meaning. Another technique seems to be asking lots of questions until he gets a correct answer or a hit. And was this a man who would have worn a uniform at some point? This gentleman? Did, did he wear glasses? Has there been a new relationship in your life recently? Have you had money problems over the last year or so? Wasn't she musical? Not that I know of. No? It's not necessarily about getting right, 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 hit, 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 hit. The point I'm trying to make is that uh, if you're getting into the whole cold reading rapport, then even the things that don't hit are still a meaningful dialogue between myself and the subject. Or it appears to be a meaningful oh, that's dialogue. Right, yeah. You capitalize on the things that are working, and the other things, you just kind of let them gently wither to one side. The whole cold reading psychological strategy is maintaining control. And to do that, I have to set the pace, I have to set the agenda. I'm giving you opportunities to agree, but very few opportunities to disagree. But what about information that seems unique to the individual? Remember the calendar? If I came into your home, do it. would I see a, a calendar or a wall? How do you explain knowing about the calendar? There are certain things that tend to come up in most people's families most of the time. The box of old photographs that they haven't sorted through for a while. The gadget or gizmo that doesn't work anymore, but they haven't thrown it out yet. And so on, and so on, and so on. And one of them is a calendar that's hanging up that's nothing to do with the present year and is out of date. So I just plucked one from my mental list and we got lucky. But to her, it was a communication from beyond. Well, I'm giving her scope for interpretation. She's making the plausible connection. I'm just giving her the material to do it with. Uh, I should be told that I should talk to you about Marie or Maria. But even after learning about Roland and his techniques, many in our audience still believe. I mean, I believe in an afterlife. I believe in the ability of a medium to bring forth messages. And I really enjoyed it tonight. I enjoyed even being part of this. I felt that your reading, as I said, to the couple, the lady there with her daughter, could have fit me. Because, I mean, I have a cousin Marie, I have a cousin Kathy, I, and it didn't. To me, it doesn't matter because I believe we get the signs we need in the way we need them. And if you're cold reading or really talking to the other side, as long as I got a sign to me that made it feel real, my hope for that it was real will make it real. Oh, Maria. Roland's hope is that by giving demonstrations like this around the world, people will become more savvy when it comes to psychics. What do you want people to learn? A lot of people go and consult so-called psychics. And the general deal is you make up your own mind as to whether this person is really psychic or not. But people can only do that if they know about cold reading and how it works. If they read about it, find out about it, it just might change the whole view of this psychic industry. As for our volunteer audience, they all indicated beforehand that they believed in the possibility of communicating with the dead. So were they angry with us? After we finished our experiment, they all said they were surprised, but still agreed to allow us to use them in this report. We'll be back.